Okay, so the other thing that I think ruffled a lot of feathers uh, in that interview that you did is this. You know, you said earlier that as Kaepernick started to gain more and more momentum, he started to speak less right. himself. He, he was not doing, you know, verbal interviews. He was doing some print stuff here and there. He would tweet and, you know, post here and there. But he was not speaking. And Nessa, his girlfriend, began to speak for him. Mm -hmm. And you made a point in that interview that Nessa is speaking for Colin Kaepernick, but she herself is not black. Right. Uh, she's Egyptian, I believe. Yeah. Which some people could classify as black, depending on the lens that you're looking at. But she is not an African-American black person as you are or Kaepernick is and so forth. And you had an issue with that. So can you explain why? Yeah, um, I had an issue with it. I mean, look, like you said, you can look deeper into the Egyptian culture and what they're dealing with. Um, I would dare anyone to ask a Nubian or a Sudanese about an Egyptian existence when they're being gunned down and people of color are being gunned down out there, um, having issues with the police. But I also, you know, would, would, would question why do Egyptians say, hey, I'm going to Africa, when they're talking about going within the same continent. It's pretty interesting. You got to do your own research on Egypt to understand this uh, versus sub-Saharan Africa, which is the lead way and the, the breeding ground for black America out here, um, or Middle Eastern culture, uh, living in Saudi Arabia like she did, whatever. I'm not going to get bogged down in those details. I will say that what she's done is gotten real comfortable with the cause, um, which is fine because of her intimate uh, experience with her, her boyfriend and Colin Kaepernick. But there, there's issue that I take that becomes an appropriation situation because she's calling other brothers out outside their names. Uh, Ray Lewis, that suggestion that he's a coon. Now, I don't know where y'all from, but if someone non-black is talking about someone black in that respect, that's a, that's a violation and that's a felony. That ain't misdemeanor, that's like, where are you coming from? Now, this appropriation situation has gotten out of control. It's not just Ray Lewis, it's Malcolm Jenkins and you know, Big Boy from Outcast, Big Boy from Outcast is now oh, uh, in, under the fire of Nessa? What qualifies you for that? Travis Scott, like these are brothers who are doing their own works. No one raised their hands to say I'm the leader of a cause. So no one is sitting there with that responsibility. But trust me, they're doing their own things. Jay-Z, like we letting her get away with it. So, you know, it's what Pac say? I got a lot of Pac for her. You might be deep in the game, but you got the rules missing. That's what this feels like. She deep in the game. I get it. Y'all cool. But we, let, we, we gave her a pass. And where I'm from... My grandma told me growing up, baby, it's okay to question God. And we were going to church every week. It's okay to question God. Just keep showing up. You mean I could question God, but I can't question Kaepernick? Y'all at that place in y'all life where we can't question Kaepernick, but we can question God? Y'all tripping. So I call it out like I saw it. And Nessa is doing too much. She's crossed the line so many times. One, just in a professional scope, you're not Kaepernick. If he's really trying to get a job, either he has to speak or no one speaks in that respect. That's why I love Jay-Z. He sat there on his press conference, introductory press conference, and said, is this about a job or justice? Because y'all got it twisted. And it's amazing that a lot of her issue and disdain is for job and unemployment issues. But I thought y'all were the leaders of a cause. If you're not going to lead it, I ain't mad. Just stop acting like you are. Do like everyone else, including myself. I have a foundation. We doing it. But I ain't going to rile everybody up and then lead them in the wrong direction and then be a gatekeeper, supposedly, to telling people who can and cannot be a part of this cause. They had $90 million, $80, $89 million on the table with the Players Coalition that was given by the NFL. And her and company of Kaepernick are going to sneeze at that? Woo! That lets me know. You don't know these conditions well enough to be clowning that. Well, you know, you talked about the Jay-Z press conference. Some of the things that he said that got people upset uh, was the whole 
kneeling, you know, being beyond that. Remember he said, you know, we understand, you know, we respect Colin kneeling, but we're beyond that. What's the next step? And a lot of people just went crazy over those statements. Like, how did you feel when he said that? I loved it because I said that three years ago. Asked my boy Kelvin Washington, my partner at the time. Boy, it was tough trying to filter through this and give Colin his due respect at the same time knowing, get up, bruh. Like, just think, Colin Kaepernick kneeled, and within a month he had a million dollars from his own owner. Imagine if Colin Kaepernick wanted to make gremlins out there, just repeat himself as an ambassador around the league. That's 32 players who go up to their owner day one, let me get a million. Boom. Now you got 64 million before you even got into an issue with anyone, before it became adversarial, before it even had contention. This is an alliance. J.J. Watt raised $40 million in like a week just because he rallied everyone. He, he was in alliance with everyone with the hurricane relief. Cap had people. He had them better than J.J. Watt did in terms of attention, in terms of endearment. And he let it all slip through. So when Jay-Z says we're past kneeling, we are. I am from a condition, a class, that when you're kneeling at kickoff, that's for awareness. Once awareness is gained, it's now time for action. So as Michael Eric Dyson wrote recently in his op-ed, and he's a mentor of mine, great guy. I love him, one of the smartest people I've ever met. <laughs> Recently found out he's Jewish. Is he disqualified? Well, y'all stop. Like, y'all petty. Y'all young. No, he's not disqualified. Here's the thing he said. We need someone to agitate on the outside. Colin Kaepernick protesting. And we need someone with action on the inside. Changing the policies, the legislation. So from where I'm from, and speaking for the voiceless and powerless, we are past kneeling. Monetize. Materialize. Get some legislation policy and bring action and resources back to the environments that need value. So many of our arguments are misplaced on color and complexion. Trust me, that weight will never escape me or anybody else of color. But the indicators show that you got to bring value to any equation for it truly to be affected. So that's all Jay-Z is trying to do. He's learned that from the bottom to where he is. This is not about black cards. This is not about how black are you. I don't question someone's blackness. I don't. I don't even care to even go through those levels. But I will question your condition. I will question your depth on something. And I will question you if you cross the line as I feel that they have.